Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Deontay Burton, aka Mr. Short Down himself. Hey, listen, I'm going to give you a video in regards to this coming from the perspective of an actual business owner when you're trying to determine if you want to hire an independent contractor or you should you hire more employees. We're going to break down the differences between the two, give you some pros and cons, and help give you some uh, deciding factors to decide if you want to get a, a, a hire an independent contractor or get more employees for your company. Okay. Again, I'm Deontay Burton, aka Mr. Short Down himself. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel, Mr. Shaw Dollar, where we talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and investing. We've got over 300 videos on the YouTube channel. Got a grant playlist with over 150 videos currently on there covering business, finance, business, management, business operation. Either way to stay updated with the great information we currently have on the channel and all the great information we have coming down the pipe, hit that dollar sign in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video. Now, going back to our video, what we're talking about today is independent contractors versus employee. Okay, so yeah, just uh, self first. What is an independent contractor? Independent contractor is somebody that does not work for the business. <laughs> as, as simple as that. Taxes not withheld for an independent contractor, okay? We're going to go a little bit more in depth with it, but those are just two basic things. They don't work for the company, somebody company hire, and they're not getting any taxes taken out, Okay. When you look at just hearing the question, what's the basic, what's the 1099 contract? 1099 contract is the same thing as an independent contract, right? The firm, the, the term 1099 just refers to the actual IRS form that an uh, independent contract will have to get at the end of the year. A quick rule of thumb is that independent contract that's paid more than $600 during a calendar year has to be issued a 1099 for that particular tax year. Some basic examples of independent contractors, you got accountants, building contractors, painters, designers, landscapers. So you kind of ask yourself, what is the difference between a 1099 contractor and an employee? So we're going to go through a couple of things. A 1099 contractor are part of a contingent workforce, right? You got freelancers, consultants, outsourced, and non-permanent workers. We say, what's a contingent workforce? That means they're just out there as needed, as available to do it, as opposed to you continuously have them working in your particular business. They're out there just in case whenever you need one, you know, just the time arises, you can actually get them, okay? What's the difference between 10? Now, again, we're going back to that. You know, these are members of the group on a, a per project basis, unlike employees. Employees also have a degree of control over, the work that, over their work, but not the method is done. Employees must follow directions. Independent contracts are, are responsible. Uh, independent contracts are responsible also for the work that they had to get done, for the method, rather. One key thing, guys, because not to get it confused, you know, you have like uh, temporary workers or day labor people. Those are still considered kind of, um, um, they, a temporary worker can be uh, considered an employee depending on how you hire them, but more so you may be contracting out with the actual agency. So they may necessarily work, they may work for you, under the guidelines that your company has them working, right? They're working on the guidelines that your company has them working, but you're not paying that temporary person and you're not paying that day labor person. You're paying the agency as a contractor to furnish your employee. That's kind of like, and that's kind of like a, a funny little gray area because even though, again, their contracts, like we said, employees have um, um, uh, no control over the, the actual direction they have to go. They have to follow the directions that are given to them by the employer. An independent contract just told to paint. Paint, provide your own equipment, do the certain things, you get the task done. An employee is, has everything provided to them. Same thing, like I said, again, we start talking about temporary workers and day, day workers. You're contracting with a company to bring people in. Even though you may give them your know, instructions, you're not going to uh, take taxes out that a particular agency is going to take care of that for you, okay? Some other things to look at, independent contractors are responsible for equipment, materials, and tools, and employees, you know, they're furnished and all that, all that, uh, those things are given to them. Employees receive benefits such as health care, ins healthcare insurance, 401k, and vacation. Independent contractors don't receive uh, these from any project that they perform, okay? Is it better to hire an employee or a 1099 contractor? Okay, we got several factors that we're gonna look at. Okay, number one being costs, benefits, workers' compensation, and payroll uh, taxes. When we look at just the cost, look, when we just kind of look at it from uh, this perspective, like I just brought up the example in regards to the um, 
uh, staffing companies or day labor agencies, in the grand scheme of things, you may pay a little bit more for an independent contractor uh, than you would actually hire an employee at that particular time. But overall, you might just only need that independent contractor for maybe a couple of weeks just to get a certain project done, help you through uh, a certain season, Christmas holidays. Uh, you may have a peak season as far as your sales and stuff like that. Uh, tax time, end of the month audit, end of the quarter audits, end of the year audits, those kind of things. So in the grand scheme of things, you just may have to have a person at a certain particular time, but you don't have to have the, the cost incurred of having them there as a continuous employee. Same thing we look at for benefits. You're not a hook with paying, you know, uh, 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 pay time off, vacation days, things like that. You don't have to worry about those certain things with just a contractor. Again, there's a need for it because you need them per job, per on a, a per item basis when, when as needed. Same thing we look at workers' compensation insurance, that's not needed. Payroll taxes, again, they're not working for you. So you actually just paying a certain amount that they need, uh, that they need per that per that job, per that project, and getting it done. Again, you may pay a contractor $20 an hour. Whereas you have an employee that you're paying them only $15 an hour or $10 an hour. But keep in mind, you're, they're more specialized in what they're doing. So you don't necessarily need them continuously just to get, you just don't need to get them uh, through a certain project or through a certain period of time. Other facts considered, like we said before, expertise, flexibility, outsourced tasks can be less expensive. I would say expertise, you can actually get a particular per a person that is very, very uh, 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 a particular auditor, a particular lawyer that may be real versed or expert in a certain field that you may already have people that work there, but they're not as knowledgeable as this person. And you don't need the expertise, just take care of certain tasks, deal with a certain case, deal with a certain situation. Uh, flexibility, you can bring them in as needed. They can come in, you know, report once a month, once a quarter, twice a year, however you need them to be, you know, whatever, you know, you guys set those parameters for you hiring that contractor. Again, it's outsourced tasks. You're not, um, uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, keeping continuous education with your current employees. You can just, not that you don't want them to grow and develop, but you're not worried about continuous to, to teach them new tasks. If a certain task arises, you can just get one time, get that particular person there, and, you know, you're covered from that perspective uh, with, with doing that again. And then the last thing, you know, we look at can be least expensive. Even though I brought up again, it may cost you, an independent contractor may cost more than your actual employees, but in the grand scheme of things, it's be, it'll be much cheaper to deal with the independent contractor because of the longevity, the time frame you're going to have them. And also you don't have to deal with also the, the additional benefits um, as far as insurance, payroll taxes, and stuff that will be associated with an employee, especially especially if you have an independent contractor that has a certain skill set. How independent contractors paid? Again, that can vary. You can do an hourly rate, uh, hourly rate, flat rate for the job, or even just buy the job. Okay. Typically, what happens? You guys agree to the terms in regards. To, you know how much you're going to pay them, what the job is, how long it's going to be. You sign a contract, and then you make sure that you have a W-9 for the independent contract. And I don't think the W-9 is just stating that this is their company name, that's their tax ID number. So if you do come in, and their address, so come a year in, you pay them over $600, you need to issue a 1099 for them. You already have the W-9 on file, so you already have the information we're doing. It's just a validation point uh, for you to have in regard to call on records for you to be able to issue out the 1099, okay? So you ask the question sometimes a person may be wondering, am I an independent contractor? Basically, the easy way to look at it, if you are paid to perform or perform work for a business that you are not employed by, then yes, you're basically an independent contractor. You know, I, it's not to really overthink. I think sometimes people, because they may be in a situation where they don't necessarily want to uh, be stuck paying payroll taxes, they'll issue out 1099 to people, but it's a very slippery slope with that. Remember, Basically, if you're telling a person to do a job and they're going about it the, the way they want to go about it, they're providing their own equipment, providing the people and things like that, you're just paying them to take care of that task, that's an independent contractor. But if you're actually providing all the equipment, tell them exactly how to do it, give them guidance, time frames, things like that, they're more like your employee. You'll be very, very, very careful with that because at the end of the day, 
the federal government or a lot of your uh, labor uh, labor forces, be the Department of Labor, uh, local state governments, things like that. They look at these things, they audit these things. You can get yourself in a world of trouble trying to cut corners. And the money that you think that you're saving or avoiding by not paying payroll taxes can really bite you in the butt after those fines and stuff. In addition to that, with those fines for not properly having people listed as employees, okay? That's very, very, very important. But again, when you start looking at, do I need to hire an independent contract or hire more people? Keep in mind, again, how long the task is going to be, how specialized the task is going to be. Um, is this something going to be reoccurring? If it's not going to be happening every now and then, these are things to keep in mind in regards to um, um, if you're going to hire an independent contractor. Does your people that work there, are they versed enough with doing this particular task or project to, um, uh, to justify if you're going to train them or just get a person in just to going to do, they're only going to do something that requires something for once a month, okay? All those kind of things got to weigh in with you being a business owner and your decision making and, and determine if you need to hire an independent contractor or just hire more employees, okay? Staying on track, if you got an independent contractor, make sure that you, you know, uh, consult, you know, with accountant or preparer. You know, I'm always telling you guys, make sure you get the right people in place and make sure you're keeping proper records. And also you file those actual returns, those actual tax returns, your 1099, 1090, uh, 1096. Make sure you stay on top of that stuff, you know, when you're dealing with contractors, okay? And just wrapping everything up, again, I am Deontay Bird, a.k.a. Mr. Shaw Dot himself. Like I said, again, hit that dollar sign in the bottom right-hand corner. Subscribe to the channel. Over 300 videos on the YouTube channel. A lot of great information, again, covering personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and investing. Make sure you hit that dollar, uh, hit the dollar sign, subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video. I hope you enjoyed my explanation between the difference of uh, hiring an independent contractor versus an employee. Take care of yourself, guys, and be safe.